Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to uh, some Nub TV. Uh, a lot of crazy stuff going on. The Smurf left, not all the way done, working on that video. Um, been machining, taking a couple weekends off, and that leads me to my project tonight, which is, uh, remember the skunk plates? I released a video on that. So I reran the plates that are for 1.8T big port manifolds and my 16, van, ma 16 valve manifold plates. And then a lot of guys have been asking about VR6 stuff, which I'm almost ready to act on. Not quite, but while running, restocking the parts I was out of, I created a new one. And what I came up with was, so this is a center feed right I made blank plates because there's a lot of people out there making homemade manifolds don't need CNC parts don't care about CNC parts sometimes they just need a new plenum or they're doing all kinds of things uh, Ford guys uh, Mopar guys lots of different applications out there and I'm not I can't get sidetracked on a bunch of stuff that I don't have I can not even keep Volkswagen stuff on the shelves because I'm just not haven't mastered that yet so I don't want to get sidetracked but what this is going to do is allow you this is a poor example because this is 20 valve but this could be any make or manufacturer you can lop off whatever section you want you could put it on a blank plate you can trace out the holes Cut them out, weld that bad boy up, port it out however you want, use a router. Man, I was doing all kinds of crazy stuff 15 years ago, using a wood router on a bench. Like, if you want to do it, you can do it. You just got to make it happen, and you don't need a fancy CNC machine. You don't have to have that. So what I'm going to do, actually, my project now is taking this blank plate, which I created. What's up, dude? How What's you doing? Up? Good. Yeah? Nice. I'm going to say uh, bye to your dad because uh, I'm going to my grandma's house. You're going to your grandma's house? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah? Bye. And then, oh, you're saying bye right now? Yeah. Bye. Okay. Well, give me two minutes and I'll come say goodbye. So, I'm actually going to create a part for the Smurf. And what I need to do is mount an intercooler to it which it'll be on the other side, but you get the point here. So I'm going to make a little bit of a recess, cut out a pocket. I'm going to transition, like roll this material so it flows nicely into there. Uh, I wish this thing was thicker, like an inch and a half, then I could get some really nice roll, but it's going to work. So not going to hold myself up wanting better. I do that a lot and Sometimes it just really delays things that don't need to be delayed. So stay tuned on uh, this little video here, and I'm going to go through what I'm doing to make that happen. All right, got to take a break from machining. Got the first op done. But in the meantime, I got... A Costco meatloaf and mashed potatoes, and my fat guy status said, Why don't you throw it in the smoker? Time for dinner. I'm gonna report back on that and we'll get to machining here. Alright, so smoked meatloaf and smoked mashed potatoes. Damn good. That's why I'm as fat as I am. Uh, got some programming done. We're moving along here. Hogging this thing out right now. Just getting some roughing going, and then we're gonna throw a ball mill in there to do the transition to the intercooler, and hopefully that goes as planned. All right, so the mill is humming along over there, getting those flanges going, or that flange going. And while that happens, so normally it's time to do ship outs. Tonight, I just got one order, three bolt, 
exhaust flanges for VR6 12 valve. Get these things packaged up. So the goal, you know, kind of a one-man band. Got a program, machine, weld, package, ship, all that other jazz. So it is what it is. And trying to like battle the time thing and be as productive as possible. And the best way to do it is when the machine's running, go get shipping done. So, a little flat rate box. Sticker, little shrink wrapping, not shrink wrap, plastic wrap, I don't know what this stuff's called. So the goal is to always get an order shipped within 48 hours. I don't print tracking numbers until it's actually going out the door. Um, I'm not Amazon, it's not going to be instant, but I really do my best to get things out in a timely manner. If anything is sold out, I will let you know ASAP. I try not to have anything on the website that's sold out. Once in a while it does happen, inventories get a little messed up because I have some parts that take more than one thing and I haven't figured out how to control that inventory across the board. It's not a big deal. I try to manage it. Anyway, got some exhaust flanges and a sticker. save whatever packing stuff I receive because everybody's doing so much shipping and receiving that what goes around comes around so we'll do that and that don't trust the adhesive on these boxes it really sucks I did do a video on that going out to I don't remember where I'm gonna go hit the shipping label on it and then as soon as the shipping labels done the mill will be done and I'll get to programming the profiling so I'm roughing out the rectangle for the intercooler and then what this is is just a transition See how it's a rolled edge? And that's about the best I can get because I had to leave room here for a gasket. I don't know if you can see that, but I had to leave enough room between the bolt and the edge for a gasket seal right there. I mean, if I was an inch or two tall or an inch taller, this would be a big fat radius getting all the way over here, but it's gonna do what I needed to do.
So this thing's just gonna profile all around that for a little bit, not in a hurry. Gonna go back, do some computer work. Got that order ready to go. Uh, probably just do a little more uh, designing on tomorrow's project. And basically that's what every day is. Just keep going and going and going on the next thing. But you can't get too far out on the designing because sometimes your brain is thinking about things that really won't work. So I don't like to get too far out. I want to be machining really close to when I'm designing the things. So like tonight really worked out. I just did step by step. Sometimes you can program each step one at a time, make a full program. Once in a while you can do 20 steps and hopefully they all come out good. Doesn't always go that well on the first round, but I didn't want to scrap a part tonight. I just wanted to make one part going on a race car. So I think this thing's gonna turn out pretty sweet. It goes right to the inner bars of the, the weld bars of the inner cooler. We're only gonna weld it from the back side. So I'm gonna put that thing down. Go like that. Get it centered up. And then weld it. I'm gonna weld that, get it all clamped down, and then I'm gonna create the end caps for the water tanks. So, it's kind of where that's at. Anyway, this was more about using a skunk plate and the different types of things that you can do. So, in theory, you could do this with hand tools. You could hog all that out. What I would do is drill holes in each corner with like a 3 8 drill bit. You could run a skill saw. That's a big blade. Uh, I like skill saws because they have metal blades like grinder discs leave fiber in the aluminum and it kind of makes it a shittier weld, but it'll still work. Uh, yeah, that's just what I'm doing with this plate to make an intercooler manifold and the options are pretty endless. So I'll throw up the link to the new part on the website and uh, really stoked to see what you guys come up with i made a little groove in there to set that guy in so that it's centered and i'm gonna weld this guy up so i use my machining fixture plate it's bolted to this and what i want to do is anchor the corners of this guy down so that nothing warps because you don't want that flange warping create a hell of an issue with your plenum and vacuum or boost leaks and you just got all kinds of problems the other thing going on so we have air going this way right well actually it'll be going that way water goes through here and the next thing i'm gonna do this is the most important part to me that it lines up so i want to get it perfect but what I'm gonna do is weld the long ones first. And basically it's gonna preheat this whole thing. And then this weld will lay flatter because I want this weld as flat as possible and not get into this core. And it needs to be hot in the plate, no leaks because you could have a water leak and it could be going into your engine if you're not careful. I've burned through bars before done all kinds of leak things and you just end up up shit creek about two miles with no paddle so you want to avoid that before it happens you end up cutting in tanks off welding welding across to to fix leaks and it sucks so keep that in mind when you're building these things um i don't know how many of these i've done maybe 10 or 15 for different people. I don't know how many are still alive out there, but it's a good recipe for the Smurf. We don't have a front mount and it worked really well last time. 
So it was part of the plan just to go with it. There you go. So, no weld born, just making race car parts. They're gonna work, so I don't worry about all that crazy welding stuff that everybody's worried about on the internet. Just weld the shit. Uh, I had that up at 230 amps. I was probably three quarter pedal. I like to run hot and not use all my power. That way if I need some, I can step on it and generate some heat. Uh, sometimes people like to see settings. Balance is at 30, 230 on the frequency, no down slope, 10 on the end amps, no big deal. Post flow is 10 seconds. In theory, I could have been like 20 seconds, but I don't know, what I do works. Uh, no pre-flow. Up slopes, like how long it takes to get to whatever your pedal hits. Not real big deal on the aluminum thick shit. So that's what I'm running, about 15 on the gas coverage. Number six cup. CK laser tungsten 330 seconds uh, eighth inch rod eighth inch 5356 rod 6061 material and who knows what you're getting out of a intercooler the bell ones are really high quality so I don't worry about it but that's what you got I'm gonna let it cool off and I'm going to design some in tanks here. So I did a bit of programming. That chunk of metal can turn into some in tanks. I mounted up. This is my plan. I'm not Ryan's. That's going to be 12 valve VR6 plenum in my car. Just my daily driver. But uh, Ryan's talked about what we're going to do there. And you can see. What's going on there? Can't see in there. Anyway, that's that. Uh, another exciting thing, I finally got, well, we got rid of Crapcast a long time ago for TV because they had us under hostage and we only use them for internet. But with that said, it was hard to get Mariner games on and I need Mariner games. So I got a Mariner game playing and then I got programming done on this in tank so i'll just check in when this thing's done machining and hopefully it's the right side
So that's like flat footed, 230 amps. Uh, the first pass is filling a big old gap right there. And that was kind of a design flaw. I shouldn't have radius that whole corner. Could have left that thing flat. Um, but it is sealed. It will keep all the water in the pocket in there. And nothing should get out. I think it's gonna work. So we're gonna run with this. I'm gonna let it cool off here for a bit and see what happens here in a little bit. All right, so it's been a little bit. Uh, got some four port flanges going on right now. Vacuum, vacuum box, vacuum block flanges, dual eight, dual eight quarter mpt whatever we want to call them so i need to wrap up uh the intercooler build um i thought i was going to get closer to completing that a while ago but things happen uh the smurf is still racing kind of some shift issues last weekend you guys saw that video um i thought that thing would be here and we would be assembling the rest of this intake to have the new motors done but that hasn't happened yet so everything is what it is some things are out of your control can't do anything about it right so you get ready and just be ready to act so to recap you just saw me weld this guy off and what i did was made some in tanks right here they're uh radius on the inside also the thought is to get the water to, you know, circulate, do whatever. I made a little bit of volume, but I didn't want huge intakes. So that's all those are. There's gonna be dash 16s welded on. Excuse the squealing over there on the mill. Uh, trying out a new program. It's uh, actually really effective time-wise, so I'll deal with the squealing. But here's what we got. I mean, this thing's gonna sit level, and actually this thing's gonna tilt down a bit in the engine bay, but the skunk plenum's gonna be out here. The turbo will feed the 90 millimeter Wilson. Um, we tried to get an 80, but something to do with the plate and a bad batch of parts and Sometimes there's all kinds of things out of your control when you're a manufacturer and you just, it is what it is. So major delays on the throttle body also, but we got that. And when the car gets back, I just need to build a boost tube. Probably a little elbow right here from the skunk manifold. And then the connector section to get that set up and clear the hood and the front grill. So that's where that's at. A uh, lot of other stuff going on in the meantime, always is, but uh, I'll uh, update the Smurf as soon as there's more done or it's here or we're racing in it. I don't know when, but uh, IFO's in two and a half weeks. So, might be on the old setup still. Learned some things with uh, shift cut. So, hopefully no more shift issues. And either way, it's going to be there probably on the old setup. So, right on. Check you later. And uh, have a good night, everybody.